This is Joseph Trust, and welcome back to another episode of Ask ZBrush. So we had a question sent in asking, how can I model a chamfered pipe shape using the ZModeler brush? So to start off, I have ZBrush loaded up, and I just have the model here that we're going to create really quick using the ZModeler brush. So this is a simple cylinder shape that has had a middle punch through it, and then it's had some chamfering applied to the ends to give it this kind of look through here. So the question is asking, how can I make a shape like this using the ZModeler brush? So to start off, I'm gonna come over here to my tool palette, and I'm just gonna click on a model over here, and I'm gonna locate the cylinder 3D primitive. I'm just gonna click that. And this is going to bring in this primitive right here. Now the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to navigate to the tool palette. I'm gonna go down to the bottom and then open up the initialize tab. I'm going to make this cylinder here a little bit thinner. So I'm going to go to the X size here and click on this and type in 50. I'm going to go to the Y size, click and type in 50. And then I'm going to go to this V divide here and I'm going to change this to say something around five. So this is going to allow me to get a middle line through the cylinder here like so. So after this looks like this, I'm going to go back to the top of my tool menu here and I'm simply going to click make poly mesh 3D. So this has converted that primitive object to a mesh now, and I can now use any of the ZBrush sculpting brushes to start deforming this. So I'm going to switch to the ZModeler brush. So I'm going to come over to the brush palette over here and click, and then I'm going to locate the ZModeler brush. Just load that in here. And now with this selected, I first want to establish some polygroups here on the model. So I'm gonna come across the top of the cylinder here, and I'm gonna just locate one of these faces. I'm gonna press spacebar to go in the ZModeler poly menu. I'm going to select the action of polygroup, and then I'm going to set the target to flat island, and then I'm just gonna come across and click, and that's going to give that flat island there a new polygroup. And I'm gonna rotate down to the bottom and do the same thing on the bottom. And the main thing here is I wanna make sure I have the same polygroup on the bottom, as I do on the top. So you can see they're both the same color through there. Now the next thing I wanna do is I need to punch a hole out of this and also chamfer some edges. So I'm gonna start cutting in some loops on the top here. So to do this, I'm gonna use the inset option. So I'm gonna hover over a poly again, press spacebar to go to the Z modeler poly action menu, and then I'm gonna choose the action of inset. I'm gonna change my target to polygroup all, and then I'm gonna change my modifier to inset region. So what this is going to do when I apply this, it's going to apply an inset effect to any areas on the model that have this polygroup applied. So the top polygroup and the bottom polygroup are the same, so when I apply this effect, it's going to happen on both sides. So I'm gonna come here and just click on a poly up here and drag, and this is going to perform this inset. And I'm just gonna describe that first thickness value on my pipe here, so say something like that. And if you just double check the bottom of the model here, you can see it's happened on the bottom as well. And then I'm gonna apply the same inset again to this polygroup this time, and just get an effect like so. So this is giving me that two-tiered area on the mesh there. Now, the next thing I wanna do is I wanna generate a beveled shape with this. So I'm gonna hover over this polygroup again. I'm gonna press spacebar to go to the ZModeler poly menu. This time I'm gonna change my action to Q mesh change the target to that polygroup all again. And now I'm gonna come across this polygroup and click and drag. And if you do this normally, you're just gonna get a Q mesh action like so, and you can see it's happening on the bottom as well. But while you're clicking and dragging, if you hold down shift, it's going to perform a move action. So now I can move this down a little bit, which is giving me that chamfered effect like so. And this has happened on the top and bottom as well. And now I just need to come through and punch a hole through this. So I'm gonna come back to this polygroup here. I'm going to now just click and drag inward. And as you breach that middle point of the object there, it's going to punch a hole right through that model there and then seal it up so it's watertight. So you can see now I have generated this effect using just a few of the actions with the Z Modeler brush. Now, if this inner dimension is too big for you, you can come through and Q mesh this area again. So I'm in the Q mesh action. Target is still polygroup all. And so I can click and drag, and this will perform a Q mesh, like so. Or I can hold shift, and this will perform a move, which is going to allow you to change that inner dimension of the pipe here as well. 
So this is handy if you need to come through and just adjust things on your model like so. And after you're happy with this, you can take it another step further. So then come to the geometry tab here, you can open up the crease menu. I'm gonna set my crease tolerance here to say something around 35 and then click crease. And this should give me a creased edge along all those borders of the model there. And then I go into dynamic subdivision and turn on dynamic. And now I have a nice smooth version of that model there. So that is the quick process of how to create a shape like this using the Z Modeler brush, starting from a simple cylinder 3D object. If you have any other questions related to ZBrush pipelines or processes, please use the hashtag AskZBrush on Twitter. Happy ZBrushing.